Anne Award. Um, the Edward S. Muskie Award is in recognition for an attorney's passion for justice and for support of legal services for the poor. Tonight we have a very special recipient. Uh, and to uh, make introductory remarks about our recipient is Lawrence Pablo. Lawrence. Good evening. There are moments in our personal and professional lives that enrich and shape and define us as human beings and as people whether it's marriage to our spouses or our partners, birth of our children, appointment to the bench as a lawyer or um, appointment as a partner or starting our own law firm, um, being selected as chair of tips. Those are all moments that are critical in establishing who we are as people. In the case of our recipient of the Muskie Award tonight, Janice Perkow, her personal and professional defining moments intersected. And more on that in just a moment. But tonight, Tips is proud to present to Janice the Edmund Muskie Award. The Muskie Award, named after Senator Muskie, is um, commemorates the Senator's commitment to civil justice and to public service. And by the way, Senator Muskie was a very active member of TIPS, and this is a very dear personal award uh, for this section um, and recognizing the type of commitment that Senator Muskie and this section has had for public service throughout its entire existence. Now Janice is a 2007 graduate magna cum laude of the Seattle University School of Law. She was admitted to practice and is admitted to practice in the state of Washington, the U.S. District Court for the Western District of Washington, the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals. She's an associate attorney at the Bolvenhauser Bailey Law Firm and practices in Portland and Seattle. Although relatively short in years of practice, Janice is a prime example of a young lawyer that has found the balance between the hard work and commitment and hours that are necessary to be an associate in a law firm and the commitment to public service, which throughout her life, both before law school, during law school, and after law school, has been such an important part of who Janice is. Now the defining moment for Janice that we're gonna talk about tonight came about in late 2010 when her brother Jason Perkow was, was arrested and later convicted with 10 others in Nicaragua for international drug trafficking, money laundering, and organized crime. Now, although there was not one scintilla of evidence linking Jason to any of these charges, nor even any evidence that Jason knew in any of these people, he was sentenced to 22 years of prison and began serving that sentence in a maximum penitentiary in Nicaragua where Jason was slowly starving to death. It took 22 months and an international campaign to free Jason. And that campaign was led by Janice Perkow and with the support of her family, uh, including her sister, uh, who's here today as well. During that period of time, Janice spent over 26 hours of legal work. She flew nearly 100,000 miles and granted over 150 interviews in a co coordinated effort to involve the press, the Justice Department, and U.S. Congress in Jason's plight. See, Janice figured out that this battle could not be won simply in the courts, perhaps in the courts of America, but not in the courts of Nicaragua. And while she put up her spirited battle 
and learned the nuances of Nicaraguan law, she realized that that was not where this case would ultimately be won. So she coordinated the effort and put together the plan in order to free Jason. Now, Janice isn't a one-trick pony. This isn't the only thing that she did. She actually, although she didn't have a background in criminal law or international criminal law, she had a background in public service because she had been committed to public service from day one. And it was that background in public service that gave her at least a starting point of how to coordinate to put together this campaign to save her brother's life. And some of the other things that Janice has done, all of which are important, and all of which were a factor in uh, the TIPS Bond Public Service Committee uh, and the council awarding this to Janice. Albeit she's a young lawyer, and often we give this award to somebody who's been around for a very long time and shown a lifetime of commitment to public service. Janice, it's very clear, is just at the, at the start of what will certainly be a lifelong commitment to public service. And it's really important for the section to recognize not only Janice, but that young lawyers and all lawyers can be committed to public service, no matter how busy we are, no matter how little we may know about what the subject matter is. Because we have a special gift and a special blessing and a special skill that we can share in serving the public. So Janice, when she was in law school, volunteered to serve uh, at the Housing Justice Project in King County, representing uh, individuals facing eviction. She later served as an unpaid intern at the International Criminal Tribunal, uh, which was prosecuting uh, Yugoslavian war criminals. She's worked on a pro bono uh, Hague Convention case related to an international child abduction. She worked pro bono on an amicus brief for the ACLU to protect Fourth Amendment rights of criminals. And since Jason's case, and we're going to have a video in just a moment because I can't begin to summarize what was involved in, in Jason's plight and the case and what Janet did to free Jason. Uh, but since then, she's become somewhat of an international rock star, much like John Tarpley is in Tennessee. <laughs> <laughs> she's uh, been asked to and is serving on the board of directors of the National Crime Victims Law Institute. She speaks at law schools around the country, engaging law students in innocent work of, uh, and protecting the innocent and getting them engaged in public service projects in that regard. She serves as a pro bono guest lecturer at Seattle University, teaching a, a, a class at the law school on media strategy in wrongful conviction cases. And she's actively involved in domestic and international wrongful um, uh, conviction cases and causes. Janice, although a young lawyer, has already exhibited a commitment to public service that all of us, no matter how long we've been practicing, can admire and look up to. And it sets up an amazing bar and example for all of us and all the young lawyers who are members of TIPS and are lawyers in this country. Let me show you a video that we put together that uh, explains the story of Jason Burakow and the work that Jabs did on that case. And sister, Jamie.
outside of a crappy shack of a courtroom, waiting for the police convoy that would take my brother back and forth from the prison to the courthouse. And the only contact that I had with Jason at that time was split second where our eyes would meet as the convoy was driving by. He was in shackles and surrounded by all of these police with full SWAT and assault rifles. And I had that one second to scream as loud as I could so that he would know that I was there and that I wasn't gonna leave him there to die. You all saw the numbers, the, the quantifiable you know, number of hours worked and miles flown and that sort of thing. But what is not quantifiable, what I can't count is the emotions, the late nights, and the devotion of the team of people who stood by my side for nearly two years to bring my brother home. And I can never find the words to be able to express to them how I feel about them and how I will always feel about them. Tonight I want to focus on just four people and try and thank them. Uh, the first is my firm, the Woman Housing Daily. You do not need a big firm with a lot of resources to fight these battles, but you do need a firm with attorneys and individuals who recognize that these battles need to be fought and who will give you the freedom to do what you gotta do. And I had that in the leadership of all of it, and I will always be thankful for that. Second, my sister, Jamie. Jamie is the baby of the family, but she took care of me. And when I was flying from country to country and running from meeting to meeting and chasing down a million dead ends, Jamie was the one who told me to eat and reminded me and reminded me to change my underwear. She was the one that took care of me, and she is an amazing person. Third, my husband, Andy. Andy's a lawyer, so he gets it. And he gets me, he knows my heart. So when I told him, you know how we just finished this case with my brother, and it took over my life, and it took every dime I had, and every ounce of effort I had, I want to do it all over again for people I don't know in a nonprofit, and it's going to take a ton of time and it's going to take a ton of money. And he said, okay, I think it's worth it. And I went, that is so cool. <laughs> and fourth, my brother, Jason, you fought like a dog for two years to stay alive in that prison. And I know that you believed in me. You believed that I was going to get you out. And even on the days where I clearly had no idea what I was doing, you still believed in me, and I, that made me fight harder. So thank you for not dying in that prison. <laughs> and just sheer incompetence, and they are struggling. And there are many here at home as well who are in the same situation. Jason's case was the hardest time of my life, the hardest two years that I've ever had to go through, both personally and professionally. Watching somebody that you love so dearly die a slow death in a Nicaraguan prison is a pain like no other. And I didn't have a road map to get him out. But as I look back on it now, I am so grateful for what that case taught me. It changed my priorities. It changed my entire world perspective. And it forced me to figure out what drives me, which I don't know that I would have gone to if my brother hadn't been locked up. So I am so happy that I have been able to now, since Jason's come out, partner up with the Oregon Justice Resource Center 
and a professor at the Lewis and Clark Law School in Portland, Oregon, to create the first ever Oregon, Just Oregon Innocence Project. Oregon is one of only four states that doesn't have an Innocence Project. And for those of you who don't know, Innocence Projects provide pro bono representation. They take up the case of people who have been convicted and are suffering for the rest of their lives in prisons in our country, even though there is compelling evidence of their innocence. So we are creating the Oregon Innocence Project, and we are going to launch in April of 2014. But we need help. We found out just a couple of weeks ago that government spending the way that it is right now, there's not a whole lot of federal grant money to go around. So we are relying on donations. We are relying on our community of attorneys to come together to support innocence projects like the Oregon Innocence Project. You all, I want to, since I've got the mic here and I've got all of you in a room, I want to <laughs> ask you all to please check out our website. It's OregonInnocenceProject.org. You can donate there. You can also write to your, your senators, your representatives, tell them to support federal grant money for innocence work. This is important. These are men and women like my brother who, are, who have lost everything. They've lost their families, they've lost their careers, they've lost any sense of self-worth that they once had. And they are scared, they are desperate, and they think that they have been forgotten. We as lawyers are in a very unique position to be able to help them, and that is our job. That's why we do this. So, Remember us. Remember us at your firm matching programs, your end of year giving, on any random Tuesday. Remember to donate to these causes because it's so important that you do. Remember also why we do this. Because we as lawyers have a fundamental belief in the justice system. And when that justice goes awry, it is offensive and it is unacceptable. And it is up to us as lawyers to put it right. So check out the Oregon Innocence Project, check out Innocence Projects in your own state, and help contribute to this cause. Thank you all very much.